Hi, my name is Lexi Jong and welcome to my channel. So today we are going to go over the new Westman Atelier iPods. And this isn't exactly a first impression. This is the second day wearing them. So I did do a wear test yesterday. I didn't film it, but I do have my findings from that. And I will give you guys an update today on um, the wear of these as well. So yesterday I wore them without a primer. Today I am using the Anastasia Beverly Hills primer. So we'll see if that, you know, changes anything, but I'll have my results posted in the description box if you are interested. Now let's go ahead and look at everything I purchased. Um, so I did do this eye look and that will be featured at the end of the video. I purchased the two new eyeshadow brushes along with the two iPods. And you can see I just used these, but let's start by talking about these brushes. So the Westman Atelier brushes are, they are vegan, um, cruelty-free nylon brushes, but they're still handmade in Japan following you know, the same type of process um, that natural hair brushes in Japan usually use where the hairs are like kind of gathered and packed in by hand. So they're not like packed in and trimmed. So they are expensive for a synthetic brush, but they are handmade and they are very well made. So the brushes that I have of hers, you know, so far, I haven't used them too much. Westman Atelier is still a a new brand to me, um, but so far I do like the ones that I have. Now, one thing I wanted to note on these, so these are made in Kumano, Japan, and the handles are made from a sustainable hardwood, hardwood birch <laughs> from a Forest Stewardship Council certified forest in Eastern Europe. So everything is, you know, done with as much environmental consciousness as possible. These brush handles are meant to be short. So here is a typical Sonia G brush. So you can see how much shorter they are. And I saw Gucci Westman actually talked about why she decided to make these so short. And it was because, you know, if you are working close to a mirror and so forth, you want to be able to, you know, get close to the mirror without your brush handle hitting. So that is why they are short. This is her blending brush. So you can see that they are shorter than that. So these are more like travel size. All right, so um, real quickly, the two brushes we have, Eyeshadow One, which is a tapered flat brush. Again, I did use it, so I apologize that it's dirty, but this is the one that is meant for general application. And because of the tapered and angled form of it, you can use it, you know, kind of in a multifunction purpose on your eye. This eyeshadow two brush is meant to be a blending brush. And you can see that the head of it, you know, it is round and it is in essence more like a stippling brush because you have these hairs at the tip that are longer than the rest of the hairs. So, it's a little hard to see because it has gotten dirty already, but um, when you're looking at this and it's clean, you'll see some translucency here because there are actually just a few hairs that are this long, which really makes it um, work really well for like a light blend or a light dusting of a product. So I actually, I really like that. Um, I wasn't sure how much I'd like these brushes, but I do like them. So I'm going to play with them more before I give you guys like a formal yay or nay but I think they are nice brushes and I didn't have any problems applying the shadow. So yesterday when I applied the Le Jour palette or iPods, I used my traditional, I think I used mostly Sonia G brushes yesterday and the performance of uh, application was the same with the synthetic brushes as they were with the natural hair brushes. So I didn't have any difference in um, picking up the pigment or anything like that. Now, one thing to note is the very first time you use the iPads, your first swatch, you're not getting up a ton, but once you kind of get that, it's not really a coating on top, but it is a cream to powder. So once you kind of soften that up a little bit, it picks up very easily. So let's go ahead and take a look at the iPods. So there are two sets that came out. There's Le Jour and Le Nuit, so the days and the nights. And the iPods are made in Italy, 
but the pouch that they come in is made in Japan. Uh, not Japan, I'm sorry. The pouch is made in China. Big difference there. All right, so when you first open it, sitting on top, you have the pouch, again, which is made in China. So it's just a little canvas pouch to keep your iPods in if you wanna take them like in your purse or something like that. And then inside you have the three shades. This is the Les Nuits set, which is what I'm wearing right now. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take a look at these and we'll swatch them after we go through everything. So this shade here is Van Rouge. This is 0 0.03 ounces or 0.8 grams. <laughs> Sorry, hard to see. Um, and you can see that, I mean, I have used it, so it's smeared a little bit, but you can see the pretty uh, logo for Westman Atelier inside. And again, it is a cream to powder. So this is a little bit of a burgundy shade. And this is a screw cap here and it is magnetized so you can stack these. And the next shade here is champagne. And we'll look at this with swatches, but actually on me, it looks a little bit more of a pearly pink. So I feel like champagne isn't the best name for it. And then the last one in this set is Noir, which is a black, and you can see there is some sparkle in there. Now with the Le Jour set, all right, we have this, you can see that the colors are similar. Um, we have two that are the same, pretty much. Yeah, so these are the same, the Chocolat from the Le Jour and the champagne from Le Nuit. And then the gold cases are the same, but the noir comes in a black case. And this one here, which is called Neige, in the Le Jour comes in gray. So here's Chocolat. And I have to say that this is a warmer brown than what I thought it was just looking at it. So um, I would say in general, all of these shades really lean more warm. Here is Neige. And it's really a beautiful sparkly snow white. And when I say sparkly, these things just have like a hint of sparkle. You can see sparkle in it, but when you apply it, you just see like a light like shimmer, um, not like chunks of sparkle. And this one here is Tabak. And again, it's a, a warm light brown. So because of the, the way these are magnetized, you can carry them individually in a purse or, you know, kind of, mix and match. One thing to note is they do screw off. And if you are just kind of throwing these around, I feel like, you know, the screws actually, it's not a deep screw. So you, you really don't even need a full turn to untwist it. So if you're throwing these around and they're magnetized, the weight of what you have on top can cause that to open. So just something to note, um, you know, I haven't thrown them in my purse or anything to test that, but just holding them and like when you just kind of, I feel I feel like that's something that's gonna happen. So I definitely, they definitely get loose just holding them like this and turning them around in your hand. So just something to note. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about the ingredients for the eyeshadows before we get into the swatches. So this information is taken from the Westman Atelier website. I'm gonna read this. I just kind of copied it down real quickly. So it says, silky emollients derived from coconut oil and fatty acids replace silicones for luxurious slip and blendability. Featherweight rice and plant extracts provide a velvety smooth application and molten second skin effect. Naturally derived pigments bound together by a unique oil gel suspension system create an elastic cushion sensation and luminous melting finish for flattering wearability. Another thing to know, uh, if you are familiar with the Westman Atelier line, um, you know, one of the main goals of this line is to use real, really like natural ingredients and be like ecologically sustainable. So there are no silicones, no parabens, no PEGs, no phthalates, no talc, no synthetic fragrances or pigments. There's no animal testing and they are a vegan product. So let's go ahead and start with swatches and okay so let's start off with the Le Jour. This here is Neige which is a snowy white and you can kind of see like an indent here 
I applied these yesterday and I used, I tried them out with my fingers and I also tried them out with natural hair brushes. And the natural hair brushes and the Gucci Westman brushes, they both applied um, basically the same performance. My finger does get a little bit more pigment. Uh, my fingers, you know, they're fat fingers. <laughs> I uh, have a little, you know, I don't really like applying with my fingers for like an all over eyeshadow look, like tapping it on in spots obviously is good, but you can see I kind of dug my finger in there. So this is a cream to powder formula and this is the shade Neige. So you can see how like light that is. Let's see if we can make that a little darker. And it's just got this like beautiful white shimmer. So next so. up we have Chocolat. And you can see kind of, it's, it's a soft shadow. So when I put my finger in it to swatch, you really do kind of make a dent in there. Okay, so this is a warm toned medium brown. And last we have Tabak, which is a lighter brown and you can see that it's definitely warm. There's a reddish undertone into it, a little bit of orange and it's definitely going to be warm tone. So this is Le Jour. Next up we have Champagne and it's a little bit hard to see but this is a really light shade. Let's see if I can get that a little darker. And although it's called Champagne, I definitely see some pink to it. It really seems like there's a little bit of a soft pink um, shimmer to it. Next up, we have Vin Rouge. And this is, you know, it's considered a burgundy shade, but it's really more of a brown with a reddish undertone. So you can see there's definitely, you know, it, it's kind of like a redwood. That, that's what it makes me think of, like a redwood tree, you know, that type of color. And last up, we have Noir. And this color, it does smoke out really well. So if you want it to, you could totally do a, you know, deep smoky eye with this and it shares out easily to get the gray undertone. So overall, we have Le Jour and Le Nuit. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off with my wear test results from yesterday. So yesterday I wore the Le Jour set and I did not use a primer. I wanted to see how the shadows held up during the day without you know anything influencing that. So they lasted about five hours before there was a noticeable creasing. Now, prior to that, you know, it was a hot day and I did spend some time outside. It was 96 degrees. I just kind of wanted to see how they held up in the heat. And I, you know, when I would get really close up to the mirror, kind of like with a magnifying mirror, I could see a tiny bit of creasing, you know, probably around the four hour mark, but it wasn't, I had to search for it. It wasn't noticeable, but somewhere between five and six hours, I did get actual creasing. Um, right in the crease and you know it basically stayed that way for the rest of the day so i had them on for about 10 hours and you know they didn't get any worse than that but i did get a crease right you know in the crease area and that remained the rest of the lid everything stayed exactly as it was when i applied so i'm testing it today with the abh primer so hopefully we'll see if that extends longevity for those now, one thing to note, these shadows, again, they are cream to powder. I feel like they lean a little bit more towards, you know, a powdery side. They're not super, they're soft when you press into them to kind of get things up, but they're not like, um, you know, super soft, super pigmented, where if you press lightly, you're getting a ton of stuff. They're, they sheer out so well. So these are fantastic for a really light, natural look. I do really enjoy them and you can build them up for a deeper, smokier look. But I think the actual intent of these for the most part is to kind of sheer things out. And obviously you can build up if you want, but I think, you know, for an everyday look, the intent is to have them a little bit lighter. So when you first go in before that cream to powder formula has kind of warmed up or that top layer is kind of removed, 
you know, it's a little bit harder to pick up that pigment, but then once you go in, like now if I go in with a brush, it just comes right up. But again, you're getting kind of a soft look like this. So uh, overall with these shadows, what are my thoughts? Um, I do really like these shadows. I think that they are great for a natural look. And I really like the natural ingredients that were used. I don't have a problem with coconut oil derivatives. Some people might, so I wanted to really make sure that I did mention that. Um, but I think that they work well, and I think these brushes are a great complement to them. So I actually really like both of them. I think this one's very versatile. I did actually like creating like a thick line um, for eyeliner uh, with this one. I used the slant tip. And you know, you're gonna get a thick line, but it it works. Um, again, it's gonna be more natural looking. And I really like how this blending brush kind of has thinner, uh, you know, a thinner collection of hairs at the tip versus down further, um, more like a stippling brush. And I think that makes it really great to get like a light wash of color and so forth. So um, overall, I do really like these shadows. The color choices, however, are not necessarily my first choice. I wish you could kind of pick each of these individually and kind of mix and match instead of buying them in these sets. And I wish there were some cooler tone shades. Obviously, you know, the black is a cool tone, but I feel like these browns, I was really looking forward to this leisure and I feel like, you know, obviously the Nash beautiful, beautiful Snow White shade. I like the shock a lot. It's a little warm, but it's still pretty neutral. But this tabac is a little bit too warm for me. It works, but I would just prefer it to be warmer than it is. Uh, maybe like a nice taupe shade would be nice or a color. Um, but I feel like this just leans a little bit. There's a little bit too much orangey red in it for me. Um, so it's just not my favorite shade. Moving on to the Lay Nui, I actually liked this set a lot more than I thought. I was afraid that this, from looking at the swatches they had online when I purchased, I thought this would be a little bit warmer than it is, and it obviously is warm, but it shears out nicely and it works well. It's the color I have on the majority of my lid, and I actually, I like it. Now, for me, I think you know, I'll probably mix the Vam Rouge and the Noir most often together because I feel like that kind of cools it off a little bit and gives it a little bit more impact. But I really like all of these. So before I purchased these, I thought Le Jour would be my favorite set. And honestly, out of all of the shades, probably Neige and Chocolat are my two favorite shades. But as a whole, I really love the Le Nuit. So I don't know if I had to pick one, which one I would get. I am not a fan of the Tabak shade. Otherwise I would definitely pick Le Jour, but I, all three of these shades here are so wearable that I might go with the Le Nuit. Um, and I like this, the look that I created today. Again, it is very light, um, but I think mixing and matching these six shades is going to be really nice. So <laughs> I think that basically sums up my review for these. And I will have a, a full Westman Atelier video coming. I finally was able to get in contact with Cospar yesterday. So they will send me a new foundation stick. Um, it's been, well, I think, three weeks now that I've had my package and I haven't been able to reach them until now. So I have a lot of new products from the line that I purchased and we'll be going through all of those very soon. As soon as that arrives, I will um, post that. But I have been playing around with some of the other items as well. So I think that sums up everything for today. If you are interested in seeing this eye look and how the shadows perform on the eyelids, please stay tuned. And if not, thank you so much for tuning in and I hope to see you guys next time. Have a great day. Okay, so I put on the Anastasia Beverly Hills Primer. And we're gonna start off with the shade Champagne. This is from the Le Nuit set. And I'm using the Eyeshadow One brush. I'm gonna put this all over. See how well this brush applies. It's a very, very soft brush.
wiping off the brush, we're going to use the same brush and we're going into Vin Rouge. This comes up pretty easily. I'm going to start from the back and see how it goes. So a little bit more. I'm gonna leave the inner corner, but I'm basically covering the lid. Wiping off the brush, we're going into Noir, and I'm just gonna add a touch of this at the outer corner. So just got a little bit on the tip of the brush. And then I'll be using this to line my eyes. So let's actually try lining with this brush and just see if I can get kind of a line here. Just taking the residue into the crease and I'll blend that out in a minute. So I'm actually putting it on the edge of the angle to do a line. Wiping off the brush, going back into Van Rouge, I'm gonna just get a little bit again on the slant and I'm going to drag it under the lower lashes. And I'm going about two thirds of the way, and then I'm going to use champagne on the inner portion. And I'm just, while I'm at it, I'm just gonna get a little bit on the brush, and just kinda go over the center of the lid again and make sure that color is a little bit more emphasized. So it looks a little like splotchy there. So let's, try this blending brush and I'm going to go ahead and this is the eyeshadow 2 brush I'm going to use this champagne shade and I'm going to twirl the brush in and you can see that the bristles on this um it's kind of like a stippling brush you know there are, some of them are longer up here but the rest of them aren't so you know you've got just a few that are longer here so I'm swirling the brush in here. I'm going into the inner corner and I'm gonna kinda use this to blend not only the crease, but also this area here towards the center. So going back to the eyeshadow one brush, I did wipe it off even though you can't really tell. Going into champagne on the angle and just doing this inner third portion here. All right, just blending the edges by the crease one more time. And that's it for the eyeshadow. I'm gonna go ahead and add mascara and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. And if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I hope you guys have a great day. Any comments or suggestions or anything, please leave them down below in the box. And again, the wear time, the updated wear test with the ABH primer will be down below in the description box. So thank you so much. Have a great day and stay safe and healthy. See you soon.